<laughs> he was about to do it. Tell him to repent. All right. You want to read the letters with me? We'll come over here and read the letters. Y'all going to read letters with me? Huh? Okay. They're going to read letters with me if that's all right with y'all. Yes. Okay, come here, Christopher. Come here to Papa. Come here. Come here, we'll put this down for a minute and come over here. Y'all can read letters with me, okay? Help me preach. He drew a picture of Jesus up here a while ago. Asked ask if Jesus had eyes. I said, yeah, he's got his eyes. Okay. They're going to help me preach while I read these letters, okay? Okay. All right. We always start our service by reading letters, okay? Okay, let's read some of these letters, all right? Okay. Uh, got a letter from William Ilsley. Uh it says, Dear Mary, thanks for continuing to send me the tapes. I enjoy listening to them. I can't wait to receive the next set. Thanks so much, Wislam, William Isley in Murfreesboro. Say thank you, William. Thank you, William. We appreciate it. Don't we? Mm -hmm. We want William to have these, these tapes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hold on. And then we got a letter from Stan Rogers. Stan Rogers. Yes, yeah, Stan Rogers. Okay. From Garland, Texas. Texas. Texas, that's right. <laughs> okay. And Stan says in Garland, he's in Garland, Texas. That's outside of Dallas. That's mean? outside of Dallas. That's right. Jim, a friend told me I needed to get a copy of Disc 2218 that your teaching on predestination that day was outstanding. Yes. That's right. <laughs> the best he had heard. Can I get a copy? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Say thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yes. And then a shell Dunaway. Yeah. Yeah. She's from New York. Yeah, he's from New York. New York. New York. Yeah, New York. That's it. Right. And uh, can you say New York? Jonathan, huh? Say New York. All right, now let me read this, and y'all can comment after I get through. <laughs> High grace and truth. High grace and truth. So I have been going to John's group in Staten Island. In Staten Island. And then another group in Brooklyn, and we had an idea. That's it. I know there are believers dispersed all over, but how great would it be to be able to gather together more and know that there are, there are groups to reach out to and maybe even all come together at a central location. I'm sure you guys have already thought about this, and I know website programming would need to be involved. Involved. Yep. But I thought this would be a, such a great way to reach out to our brothers and sisters all over the United States and world. It's so encouraging knowing there are like-minded believers in your hometown and all over. Who knows, maybe even if you have traveled, you could look up on the website a group in the area to attend and believe there are some public sites that have this software too. I've been... Software, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been talking to our group and we wanted to try and reach out to everyone in the New York City area to try and congregate at to the Brooklyn Church location. I was wondering if you had an email list or contact list that you could send me so I could reach out to everyone to try and let everyone know there's a place to meet at, uh, in case they hadn't heard. It's at the World of Life Ministries located 485 Rogers Avenue in Brooklyn and meets on Sundays, 
much. Now, shall we hey now? Any help would be much appreciated. Thank you so much. A Shell Dunaway. This is a Shell Dunaway in New York. Say thank you, Michelle. We love you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Ow! Ow! Let me see here. Got a comment from YouTube. Lawrence got this. Jim, in all respect about your lessons, I think that this, that to to this day, signs and wonders are a part of a heavenly church. People still are speaking in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> T-O-N-G-S tongues. And casting out demons. Well, not really. We don't believe that. No. No. And healing sick people. Don't forget about last words of Christ and Mark's gospel. If you don't meet those people in your life, don't talk that don't talk that mature churches without wonders. This is not truth. Mark, you don't know what you're talking about. No. He does not know, does he? Huh. Do y'all want to go back there since y'all helped Papa preach? Y'all go back there. Y'all have helped me preach some. Okay, go back there to Mom. Y'all have helped me preach. Go back there now. Papa's got to finish his message. You can't... Not now. No, not now. Y'all help, y'all help me preach now. Go back there to Mama until we get through. You can help me preach some more. Whew, that's a wrestling match. Whew. You have to go back there to Mama. All right. And they wear me out. All right, then we got a letter from uh, uh, hmm. I'll have to look at that later. Uh, got a letter from uh, Billy Bob Beamer. Dear James Brown. I'm not James Brown. Wow! <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> uh, I'm Jim Brown. That's my name on my birth certificate, Jimmy. Appreciate you reading my last email at your September 7th service. Writing again was not in my plans, but I decided that to put all to rest, I must correct you on at least one thing you said. You stated that I must not have studied you closely because of what I wrote. To the contrary, sir, I wrote what I did because I did study you and your theology. Well, you said a lot of things I don't believe, and I didn't say those things. Your comments to my email were indeed predictable, which begs the ever so good question, why did I ever both write? I don't know, why did you? Don't bother to if you can't repeat me correctly, because you didn't. I think it was because I am sick of hatred masking under the name of Christianity. You're supposed to hate. God hates all workers of iniquity. And he loved Jacob and hated Esau. You cannot love vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Good grief, man. In any event, just as you will know, I watched you on TV, listened to and studied hundreds of hours of your tapes, and was involved in a four-year correspondence in depth with one of your former congregants assigned to me. I could question why I wrote him for such a long period. I don't know why you did either. If you want to argue, go somewhere else and fight somebody else. We're not going to change from the truth to your lie. Also, he insulted me regularly. Well, you probably needed it or needed a hard correction. But being a student of human behavior, you're not a very good one. I can honestly say that I found all very educationally informative. On the other hand, when I woke up, I realized that I had deep ended into the neo-Calvinist theology. I'm not a Calvinist, never have been a Calvinist. I've read John Calvin. I believed in predestination 20 years before I read John Calvin. And that was ultimately untenable. Okay. The Bible read as a whole does not teach hatred. Yes, it does. Take that. Yes, it does. It teaches hatred. God hates all, God loves no vessel of wrath going to hell that he fixed and fitted for hell. 
where in the world people get hatred is the devil's word. It's God's word. Also, it is good to remember that the biblical canon you cherish was ordained by the Catholic Church in the first few centuries. No, that's why this guy don't like me. He's a Roman Catholic. No, it wasn't. A church you, you castigated regularly on your program. I despise Roman Catholicism. Didn't just castigate them. I hate them. Also, good to remember is that when the oldest known Bible, the Sinai, that's not true. The Sinaiticus was a translation. It was the bold, it was the it was not what you're talking about. The the actual Sinai was the was actually the translation uh, of the Westcott and Hort text. Goodness gracious alive. Well, Jim, uh, let me see here. Uh, the last thing I want to say is that I was first led away from your ministry by your off-handed references to people being in or going to hell. You don't believe people go to hell? Only God would know that. No, we will know them by their fruits. And if they do not bring forth fruits worthy to be called works of repentance, they will go to hell. If they're not repentant, they will go to hell. If one believes in eternal hell, etc., my concerns say... The one Sunday you casually said that the tiger that Tiger Woods was going to hell, which you did. I have never heard him talk about a daily cross, death, self, self denial, and born again repentance. I believe Tiger Woods is going to hell, along with Frank Sinatra's already there, and Michael Jackson. Well, what if one of your let's say television listeners heard you? Well, I hope they did. Let's further say that this person is mentally unbalanced. He or she thinks, well, Jim says he's going to go to hell, so God must hate him. Everybody that goes to hell, God hates. So I'll do good and hasten the process and kill old tiger. Unbelievable. Well, if that happens, it's God's will. That's like saying, don't rebuke anyone, because if you rebuke the president or you rebuke a senator, you, somebody liable to assassinate him. So let's don't rebuke anyone. Don't do what Jesus said. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Actually, I know you're going to correct me on that. That was Paul that said that. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Unbelievable. Now, please. I'm not saying you intend violence. You're very funny. You know that. Why don't you go join the circus? I can't speak, I can't speak for that other theology group, like-minded to yours. Fred Phelps, Westboro Baptist. I don't believe homosexuality is any worse than adultery or any other planned sin. I believe they're all presumptuous sin. God will judge a man for it. In your case, anyway, I believe the consequences will be unintended. But I have seen close up personal how such preaching teaching led to several murders. James, I'm not James. My name is Jim. Never have been James. Nobody's ever called me James. So I'll put Jim in it. Jim, I am a Christ follower. I don't believe that. If you follow Christ, you'll have to believe his word. He says he hates vessels of wrath. I grew up in the church but had a, but had a paradigm shift. Gosh, gee whiz, thank you for that big word. What is paradigm? Paradigm is what most of the people believe out here in public. That's a paradigm Shift. I'm shifting what most of the world believes. No, you're not. You're believing what most of the world is believing. Changing conversion experience or awakening to the truth already there. In 1972, I have had multitudes of faith-based questions, but have never doubted my relationship. Well, that's your problem there, which, after all, is what faith is based upon not dogma or doctrine. You're an ignoramus. Doctrine is everything. The word doctrine, didache, means instruction. If anyone brings down any other doctrine, do not bid them Godspeed. Do not be cheerful to them. Do not be gracious to them. Neither receive them into your house. Uh, in my case, my relationship with Christ, who is God, has been cemented by personal experience. Well, that won't help you, Billy Bob Thornton. Beamer. That's all I've done. I haven't, uh, so I write 
is one that perhaps you won't recognize. I do not worship a false deity. I believe you do. But enough of that. That's all I've done. Have a good day. Sincerely, Billy Bob Beamer. Well, why don't you just go somewhere else because I don't like your words. I believe you're ignorant. You say things that's not biblical. God hates all workers of iniquity. He loved Jacob and hated Esau before they were born. Now, you can deal with that or not, mister. God will deal with you at the judgment. So what do you do? Won't it? They're funny. Normally, I wouldn't even read something like that, but I just got on a kick tonight. I don't like... I don't even like people that don't like God's word for what it says. I don't like to be around them. I like to talk to them. If you hate the word of God, you hate it when you say he don't mean what he says. He don't mean it when he says he hates all workers of iniquity. He means exactly that. That's the problem. People have defined their God. They have made God to be somebody they want him to be. They just... They've created God in their own image. That's what they've done. That's right. And their idol is themselves and their, and their 20th, 21st century American reasoning, which God don't use at all. To understand that God hates certain people, which is most of the people. Not only do God hate, but he hates most people alive and most people that have ever lived. That's a hard word. Well, you, you prove that. Well, many are going to go into the Broadway that leads to destruction, and God's going to fit these vessels of wrath fitted for destruction, and few are going to find the narrow way that he's going to open to their minds and their hearts. So therefore, few of the people that are alive and few of the people that have ever lived will go to heaven one day, and that's because he loves the few and hates the many. Now, that's the truth. But our, But if... But how are you going to get the majority of the world to believe that when the majority of the world's going to hell and God hates them and he hadn't given me ears to hear? And it's, you're not going to get them to hear, are you? I doubt if this guy's going to hear anything. He likes Catholicism. He's probably a Roman Catholic. You know, the fact that I say God hates Roman Catholics, you might come and shoot me. Like you said, somebody may kill somebody because I said God didn't love them because they were sinners. Already made. Whatever happens is the will of God. That's the thing. All right. I'd like to thank my helpers tonight for helping me preach. Christopher drew a picture of Jesus up here. And I said, he said, what can I draw? I said, draw a picture of Jesus. He said, does he have eyes? I said, yeah, I think he does. <laughs> but uh, they ask funny questions at that age. Don't forget our TV around Nashville. We're on TV in Nashville uh, on Monday night and Saturday night at 10 o'clock. And uh, it's channel 176. We're on channel uh, 176 Wednesday morning, Friday morning, midnight. And we're also on Thursday night, channel 49 at uh, 11, Comcast. And then channel 3 every Tuesday evening at 5, Thursday night at 7. And uh, uh, we're on radio every Saturday morning. Be sure and watch us. Uh, we're on TV all over the country. We're on about 200 different towns and cities. And, uh, <coughs> and I always like to mention our needy and our poor and our downtrodden. We try to help the needy. We, we're always reaching out to them and trying to pick up the people who believe truth. We don't, we're not looking for needy people outside the church. There's probably 10,000 of them or 100,000 of them in Nashville, and we can't feed that many, and we don't believe in feeding the people outside the church that don't believe God. We're to communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Only people who receive these good things of God are we to communicate to or to share with. So when we try to help people associated with the church with truth and we always try to give them uh, food we have a pantry you want to contribute to the food pantry you bring food here or to the house on Friday night and if you like uh, uh, 
to send food cards if you're long distance. Uh, I call them food cards, but they're actually just just cards, uh, master cards, or you can get a fifty dollar, twenty five dollar uh, master card, Visa card, Walmart cards, and we'll get these out to the needy people that need them. One hundred percent of all the money you send in goes to the poor. In fact, more than a hundred percent, because I take a little out of the ministry and give along with it. So, just we'd like to. Uh, We've got people that can't hardly live. They live on less than a thousand a month. Some live on less than five hundred a month, and I don't know how they do it. It's just uh, the miracle of God that they do. Uh, and remember our our uh, missionaries down in Ecuador. We give to them on a regular basis. Uh, we believe in supporting these missionaries because they preach predestination, the sovereignty of God. And uh, if you would uh, like to give to them, you can write a check, send it to us here at Grace and Truth, and be sure and put on the bottom of the check, if it's to go to them, put missionary fund, and we'll get it to them right away. And uh, don't have, Barbara's not here, is she? Are they on a trip? They're out of town, okay. Well, uh, and we meet on Friday night at my house to package DVDs and to fellowship and eat together. So come over and join us. Uh, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, I need your prayers. And uh, good, good to see Charles Dean here. Charles, won't you pray for us right now?